The race for the gavel is on after eight House Republicans joined Democrats in removing Kevin McCarthy from his post as Speaker. The Majority Leader Steve Scalise and Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan officially declaring their candidacy. So will the party be able to unite around one candidate? Let's bring in Katie Pavlich, townhall.com editor and a Fox News contributor. So who do you believe at this point between Scalise and Jordan, the two have declared, has the inside track? Well, Jim Jordan certainly is a lot of endorsements rolling in. Steve Scalise has a few of them. Uh, Jim Jordan is also supported, or has been in the past, by uh, President Donald Trump, who now we know will be on Capitol Hill next week on Tuesday as this debate really start, gets started. We do know now that the interim speaker wants to make sure that all the votes are kind of whipped up and counted before they start bringing this thing to the floor so that they don't have a number of rounds for the Republican Party to publicly be airing their differences. But overall, you know, talking to conservatives, uh, they say this is a good thing, that they're hashing this out. They want to find the right speaker to move forward. There's mm -hmm. a number of issues. Uh, but in the end, you have to find someone who can... can convince the eight people who voted to oust Kev McCarthy. Then, of course, you have this very slim margin of only being able to lose four Republicans before you have a problem. So we'll see. I've also heard uh, from uh, Congressman Max Miller, who did an interview with the Ruthless podcast, and he said that he's actually interested in looking at getting rid of all of the old leadership that was associated with Kevin McCarthy. And he was actually for keeping Kevin McCarthy in place, but he thinks because of what happened, they need to just start over uh, with a new slate of candidates for a number of of different positions. So it's not just going to be about speaker. It's going to be about a uh, majority leader and a number of other leadership Whip positions and as well. every, Everything else, because, you know, I, I think that Tom Emmer is looking at moving up to majority leader, and then somebody would be looking to move up to whip. Right. If it is Scalise who becomes the speaker, if Jordan becomes the speaker, that's a whole different calculation. But I want to go to call for number three here. Politico had uh, a, a brief little look at the strengths and weaknesses of both of these candidates. Scalise, strengths, relationships, personality, and his story, of course, biggest witness, weakness, old feuds, including with McCarthy, which may actually be a positive for him. Uh, the dark horse candidate, Jim Jordan, greatest strength, conservative credentials, and the Trump card, because Trump really likes him, greatest weaknesses, history, tactics, and fundraising. I mean, if you're looking for a speaker, what, what would the difference be between a Scalise speakership and a Jordan speakership. Well, Steve Scalise is seen as more establishment. He's mm -hmm. been in leadership for quite a long time. He has a great personal story about what he's been up against with Democrats. Uh, Jim Jordan has the argument that he can hold Democrats accountable while also focusing on what conservative Republicans want to be their priorities going into the Congress with his leadership as speaker. Uh, both of their letters talked about putting the country first and making sure that an agenda that cuts down on government spending that really holds the Biden administration accountable is something that they both want to do. Um, but Jim Jordan also sets up this situation where if he leaves the House Judiciary Committee, who's going to take over that oversight capacity, given that that's really one of the committees leading the charge of the impeachment inquiry against President Joe Biden. So they're both similar in a lot of ways, also different. Uh, Steve Scalise worked very closely with Kevin McCarthy, uh, and may that may be seen as something that is a positive, given how mm -hmm. upset all of the Republicans who wanted to keep McCarthy are. However, there's also a number of people, including people who supported keeping Kevin McCarthy, uh, that they want a clean slate and to start over. And Jim Jordan has been seen as a disruptor who's unafraid to rule somewhat like Nancy Nancy Pelosi uh, with no apologies and to hold on to power rather than having these divisions in the party. Uh, speaking of, of, of Nancy Pelosi, the old Pelosi rule that you had to have, was it two thirds of the Congress right. agree to introduce a motion to vacate? And then Matt Gates got that knocked back in his negotiations with, with McCarthy. And then it was Gates who ultimately brought this motion. Carl Rove, this is call for number four, wrote about that today in the Wall Street Journal saying that Matt Gates should be basically made a pariah. He said, if Mr. Gates insists on concessions from any prospective speaker, the candidate would be wise to tell him to politely get lost. His colleagues see him for what he is, now act to weaken him. But Gates is expected to continue to push for the one vote or the one member threshold on a motion to vacate. Would, would Scalise or Jordan or whoever be nuts to <laughs> sign on to that? Possibly, but it all depends on the numbers. The reason why Kevin McCarthy had to agree to this one uh, one member vacancy rule is because he was unable to coalesce enough votes to get him to the speakership, which is why he saw 15 rounds of voting. If one of these candidates are able to get some leverage on the vote count, then they don't need Matt Gates. But with all due respect to the former speaker, Newt Gingrich, there were eight Republicans who voted against uh, Kevin McCarthy, and that's why he's out. So it's not just about him.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.